Life and Death Two forces of equal importance that are in constant cycle with one another. The vibrance and vitality of life is adored and respected only because the finality of death is an ever-present threat. Yet death itself isn't the thing we should fear, it's the absence of a true death that should worry us. Today I'm going to cover a topic that may disturb some, but I feel the knowledge will do more good than harm. So listen close, my friends, as we try to do our best and understand the undead, or as they are more commonly known, the Ashkin. Ashkin is a generalized term. Everything from zombies, walking skeletons, ghosts, wraiths, and banshees are all part of the Ashkin family in the Eorzean bestiary. Yet, all Ashkin are considered undead in some way, shape, or form. Though, allow me to give a brief explanation on life so that we might better understand death. All things great and small in the world are filled with and fueled by Aether. This pool of personal Aether can be deep or shallow depending on the person, but most of the time can be trained so that anyone can get the most out of it without draining themselves completely. Without this Aether, our soul's connection to our bodies would break, and we would die on the spot, our bodies being left behind like an empty vessel. But if someone is mortally wounded and their body gives out, all that unspent aether is released at once, and the potential energy eventually hardens and becomes crystals. This is normal. Plants and animals are dying of natural and unnatural causes all the time, which is why there is never any shortage of small crystals for gatherers to harvest. However, undeath is what happens when our spirit leaves our mortal frame in an attempt to return to the life stream only to be held back and forced into a new form. Likewise, our empty bodies are sometimes made to operate on their own, without our spirit to guide them. This creates an Ashkin. This creates undead. This process and existence is just as harrowing as it sounds. A soul that was naturally trying to return to the life stream and cycle of rebirth is now forced into a new form by binding it to an old or new body with twisted aether. This existence is nothing but a constant pain and torment for the Ashkin. This is why the undead are so hostile. The anguish they feel from their twisted existence drives them mad. They're no longer able to think rationally, and the personality that makes up their being gets lost in this never-ending torture. Most Ashkin become nothing more than rabid monsters because of this, lashing out at anything living out of hate or jealousy. If they can't enjoy the natural cycle of life and death, then they'll bring death to all those who enjoy life. This is how twisted their thoughts can become after getting robbed of their future existence. Another form of undeath is that of an empty vessel, being stimulated with enough aether to encourage the body to almost remember what it used to be like. This soulless existence also plagues it, since the empty body understands on some level that it's missing something important and will kill anyone to try and get a new soul and feel complete. While extremely rare, there are some accounts of Ashkin maintaining some level of cognizant thought even after being reanimated. It's theorized that these individuals were raised shortly after their death, and their soul wasn't given time to completely detach itself from its moral thoughts and desires. While this type of undead can be considered peaceful to some, it doesn't lose its dangerous potential. Given time, the twisted aether that keeps them bound could drive them to madness like all other Ashkin. This is because their existence was never meant to satisfy their body or spirit, only create a simulation of life. 
The creation of most Ashkin are able to be grouped into two primary methods, with there being a handful of extremely rare instances. The most common reason for an Ashkin's creation are intense emotions that makes their spirit restless after death. For instance, the reason you don't see every war zone littered with undead is because those who fight already understand they might die. Even if they don't accept it, understanding they're about to perish does make the process of moving on easier on them in a weird way. However, that doesn't stop undead from being created by war, not by a long shot. It's far more common for someone who was murdered or died of sudden unexpected causes to create something like a wraith, specter, banshee, haunt, or ghost. They're so upset and disgusted by their premature end that their soul gathers and twists enough ambient aether to create and bind them to a new form, unknowingly subjecting themselves to undead torture. As you can see, these kinds of undead are more easily identified by their wispy, otherworldly appearance. If one were to touch them, they'd feel something akin to a cloth made out of cold flesh. Their desire to remain alive is so strong they cling to this new body with all their might. They unknowingly harm the living by trying to finish whatever business they have on the material plane, or lash out at them to try and rationalize their demise. Make no mistakes, they almost never remember their life before death. Like stated earlier, this existence is harrowing to them driving them crazy and ready to attack anyone they see as a threat to their assumed life. The second most common form of undead are the ones made from a dark ritual or forbidden necromancy. Typically this involves a mage or mages attempting to reanimate dead bodies into something similar to a golem that does their bidding. The results of these experiments are usually seen as whites, zombies, zongbeto, and gravekeepers. Unlike the other type of undead we discussed, you'll notice that these have a far more solid form of already existing physical matter. That's because these dark spells are being cast on unwilling vessels in hopes of stimulating them with enough aether to return to some form of life. These undead are typically mindless and without souls, acting out the program given to them by whatever ritual was forced upon them. The most depraved necromancers will force lingering spirits into these dead vessels so that the resulting creation has greater control over their actions and abilities. The reason these godless mages are willing to make such minions is because of how resilient they are. A zombie doesn't need to eat, sleep, or drink to maintain its life. They don't feel pain and only stop attacking their foes once they're beaten to the point that the Aether stimulating them can't be contained in their body any longer. Necromancy rituals usually take a long time and a lot of Aether, which is why no one has ever managed to raise an undead army to take over a kingdom successfully. Even still, there are some records of Ashkin being so powerful they're able to command other undead to do their bidding effortlessly. Oddly enough, it's seen as easier to summon and bind a void scent than it is to create powerful undead en masse. However, there was one instance in our history where someone tried to make a cursed blade that would turn whomever it stabbed into loyal undead. The blade was called Heartstrike, and luckily for us it was a failure and never became the army raising weapon it was intended to be. The last type we'll cover is one of the more rare forms of Ashkin, but no less dangerous. There are monsters that are slain by deceptively dangerous flora and reanimated by the plants themselves. For example, a rotting gubu is very much undead. This is because the spores from lethal plants had caused the monster to become infected and essentially go brain dead. The spores accumulate in its body and steadily twists its aether into becoming nothing more than a tool for the plant to spread more of itself to other monsters. 
When instances like this are found, the plants are typically burned out of an ecosystem to prevent additional spread of undeath. If the infestation is too great, the area is quarantined, and the plants are left to starve themselves out of existence. Most cultures on our star see necromancy and undeath as disgusting and forbidden. We understand how the cycle of life and death works, and removing essence from the cycle hurts not only that soul, but the living and the life stream as well. The only accounts I could find where necromancy was mildly allowed were the mummies of Belladia. While mummification isn't uncommon in our world, these corpses were wrapped in a cloth that was scribed with runes of power, turning the cadaver into a sentinel that would guard their tomb from invaders. It's assumed these soldiers willingly offered their bodies in life so that it may continue to serve in death long after their soul had returned to the life stream. Past that, I could find no confirmed records of necromancy in a positive light. Everything I found suggests that even the use of undeath in a well-meaning fashion usually ends horribly in one or more ways. This horrible reputation is what puts necromancy in the same forbidden realm as that of void magics. It could be suggested that the reason for this is the idea that if everything in life rotated through the life stream as it should, the Ashkin wouldn't even exist. Cultures and colleges refuse to celebrate something that's so detached from what it should be. Typically, the ones who result to necromancy and the creation of Ashken are those who forsake their people and morals just to try and pitifully grasp at the power over life and death. We have so many professions and groups that respect and nurture life. Those who would heal the living and keep them on this plane until they're able to depart with content and return to the life stream peacefully. We even have priests and mages who do their best to satisfy the souls of the deceased so that they might move on and not turn into Ashken. But no one person or group is there for the undead that have already been created. They're seen as forsaken abominations and put to the sword by powerful adventurers when able. There is nothing that can be done to help them once they go crazy aside from trying to put them down and hope their soul continues to the life stream instead of lingering longer. Mayhaps in the future, someone or something will be able to stand as the overseer of death, just like the many groups we have that protect life. We should welcome such a profession, someone to end in Ashkin's madness and guide their wayward souls back to the cycle. Good day! Thank you for staying to the end of my lesson. It's my hope that you found something new and interesting in between my ramblings. If you did, consider subscribing and liking this video. Doing that is the easiest way to tell me I'm doing a good job at feeding your thirst for knowledge. If there is a topic you'd love to learn more about that I've yet to cover, let me know in the comments and I'll see where my research takes me. I'd also encourage you to share what you learned here with your friends and adventuring companions, and if they're interested, Bring them to the next assembly. I hope to see you and any other curious travelers in the next lecture. Till then, stay safe my friends.